Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Youssef. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received a telephone call from the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, who congratulated His Royal Highness on his safe return to Bahrain, wishing him lasting good health and happiness. His Royal Highness expressed thanks to the Emir of Kuwait, hailing the strong fraternal relations between the two countries and peoples. He prayed to Allah the Almighty to bless the Emir of Kuwait with good health and happiness and his country with further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, held a telephone call with the Prime Minister of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Khalid Al Hamad Al Sabah, where he reassured on His Royal Highness's health and wished him lasting good health and happiness. His Royal Highness expressed thanks and appreciation to his Kuwaiti counterpart for his noble feelings, wishing him lasting good health and happiness. His Royal Highness also praised the deep rooted ties between the two countries and wished Kuwait further progress and prosperity. The Kuwaiti Prime Minister then expressed thanks and appreciation to the Kingdom of Bahrain for ensuring the safety of Kuwaitis in Bahrain and wished Bahrain further progress and prosperity. The Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, chaired the Council's weekly meeting where it approved a draft law regarding criminal procedure. The Council then approved a draft law adding a second topic to the criminal procedure law and amending another. The Council then added that amending this law aims to allow the public defender or the court to withdraw from the travel ban, as well as for the court to consider the merits of the case, whether on its own initiative or at the request of the public prosecution, the accused or his own representative. The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid al naimi attended the inauguration of the Educational Channel on Bahrain TV in its first broadcast today at 9 a.m. in the presence of the number of officials in the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Information Affairs. al naimi hailed the cooperation of the Ministry of Information and the support it provided in launching the first educational channel in the kingdom, expressing thanks and appreciation to the organizers of the project. He affirmed that the dates of the broadcasting lessons will be published continuously in addition to uploading them on YouTube and noted that 142 lessons have been recorded and work continues to produce more. The Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning, Isam Khalaf, affirmed the continuity of work of food markets and opening them in the usual way due to its importance to people's lives and providing their daily requirements. He asserts the importance of following the instructions of the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus in order to stay safe. He added that following the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to provide the essential needs to citizens in light of the current circumstances is important and that all citizens and residents should follow instructions. The minister urged all citizens and residents to assume responsibility regarding this issue and take all preventive and precautionary measures necessary. He prayed to Allah the Almighty to protect Bahrain and wish everyone lasting good health. The Minister of Health, Faiq al-Saleh, and the National Task Force for Combating Coronavirus held a press conference earlier to discuss the latest developments related to COVID-19. The Minister of Health offered her condolences on the death of a 51-year-old female Bahrain national who was registered as an active case of coronavirus and was suffering from underlying the chronic health problems. She held the directors of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to apply the working from home system for Bahraini mothers. She stressed the importance of social distancing and only go out when necessary. As Saleh commended the ministry's efforts in combating the spread of the virus and containing it. She affirmed the continuity of health care to all citizens and residents free of charge. She stressed the importance of following regulations and precautions to combat the virus. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zaida Zayani, assured that there will be enough food supply, adding that restaurants will remain open and will comply to all rules and regulations and bank branches, supermarkets, bakeries and pharmacies will remain open. The Chief of Public Security, Tariq Al Hassan, expressed appreciation to the Bahraini society for their cooperation with this matter and praised the patriotic stances of the volunteers who reached more than 31,000. He said that gatherings with more than five people and gatherings in parks and public beaches are prohibited, adding that legal procedures will be taken if this decision is violated. Al Hassan noted the importance of taking information from its official sources, noting that legal procedures were taken against those who tried to spread rumors and false information. The infectious diseases consultant and microbiologist at the BDF Hospital and member of the National Task Force for Combating COVID-19, Colonel Dr. Manaf al Gahtani, stated that cooperation with WHO is ongoing, noting that Bahrain is the first country in the Arab region to try different medication for coronavirus. He highlighted that daily tests have reached 1,200 with 149 recovered cases on coronavirus. He noted that 250 people left quarantine and none of them have spread the virus in society. 
Al Ghahtani stated that the Bahrain Exhibition and Convention Center has been allocated for all types of examinations. He added that there is a special mechanism for examining people who have been in contact with those affected by COVID-19. The consultant of infectious and internal diseases at Samania Medical Complex, Dr. Jamila Salman, stated that there is 183 active cases in the kingdom. The Ministry of Health announced the death of one 51-year-old female Bahraini national who was suffering from underlying and chronic health problems and was registered as an active case of coronavirus. The diseased female had returned from Iran via the international COVID-19 ICRP earlier this month and had not entered the general population. The individual, upon arrival to Bahrain, was placed in isolation and received extensive 24-hour treatment from a specialized medical team. The ministry highlighted that excluding three cases, all other active COVID-19 cases remain stable and that all patients after receiving treatment from a specialized medical team following guidelines provided by the WHO. The Ministry of Health expressed its heartfelt condolences to the individual's family at this difficult time. The Under Secretary for the Ministry of Health announced that the second batch of citizens will arrive tomorrow as part of the plan to evacuate citizens from Iran. He added that as part of the precautionary measures, all arrivals will be subjected to testing and transfer to isolation following guidelines approved by the WHO in order to ensure their safety. He affirmed that the Ministry of Health continues its efforts to evacuate citizens from Iran through providing the best medical services. The Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism calls on all retail and supermarkets in the Kingdom of Bahrain to adhere to the guidelines issued by the Ministry of Health to combat the coronavirus by visiting the Ministry of Health's website, which include the following. Leaving one meter between each customer while shopping in retail stores. Hypermarkets and supermarkets in Bahrain activating the e-shopping services as much as possible in all retail stores, hypermarkets and supermarkets. Providing a temperature measuring device and checking all shop users by measuring their temperature. Easy access to goods with frequent purchase. Providing hand sanitizer to all customers. And the ministry urges all workers who work at the supermarkets to wear masks and gloves, cleaning and sterilizing all shopping carts before and after each use. The activating electronic payment devices remotely in all stores, hypermarkets and supermarkets.